You can't really understand the whole issue of diabetes without understanding blood flow. And today, we're going to talk about that. Well, here's a comment from a person who says, I was a medic slash operating room technician during Vietnam where all our amputations were from wounds and accidents. After Vietnam, they were from car and motorcycle accidents and one trampoline accident. Now most are from diabetics. So from the 60s and 70s, it was accidents. Now diabetes appears to be the leading cause. Well, I got curious and Googled that, and apparently the leading cause is not diabetes. It is what they call trauma, and again, that would normally be speaking of accidents, uh, car accidents and so forth. Uh, it says, uh, and the statistic that I saw says the most common cause of amputations was trauma, which made up 54% of, um, of the patients. The diabetes patients made up 26%, and that was the second cause of amputation. And then it said uh, the next category would be those who had severe obstructions of blood vessels. But of course, having sub severe obstruct uh, obstruction of blood vessels doesn't come out of nowhere. It doesn't come out of the air. And my, uh, my guess would be, my, uh, my feeling would be that many, if not most of those obstructions in the blood vessels is from the root of diabetes, which is insulin resistance. So you may not be a full-scale diabetic. You may not have had the doctor use the D word for you. Your A1C may be, be below 6.5. And yet you've got terrible incident resistance and it's causing obstructions and so forth. So I would guess that between the 26% of uh, diabetics that make up the amputations and the 10% that have severe obstruction of blood vessels, uh, you'd probably be at least up to 30% of the amputations coming from either diabetes or insulin resistance. I saw an, an article by Mary Caffrey who wrote this. Lower limb amputations may be rising in the U.S. after decades of decline, according to data published in Diabetes Care. Poorly controlled blood sugar that occurs in diabetes can limit blood flow to the lower legs and toes. Uh, need to say that again. Poorly controlled blood sugar. Well, that's where it's bouncing all over the place and it's too high for too long throughout your days. And, sh and this uh, author says it can limit blood flow. Well, that's at the heart of problems in your feet and legs. Now, why is it your feet and legs? Why not your hands and arms? Why not in your shoulders? Well, the answer is your feet and legs are about as far as you can get from the heart. The heart is pumping that blood. And so by the time the blood gets down to the, the feet and the toes, it's come a long distance. And therefore, if your blood flow is not strong and the heart can't really pump it freely like it should, then you're going to experience the worst problems in your feet and toes, and then it'll work its way up the legs. Uh, Mary uh, says cardiologist Foluso Facoridi, who practices in the Mississippi Delta, recently wrote about the dangers of untreated peripheral artery disease, the PAD I spoke of in our most recent uh, video. And this cardiologist says every year, approximately 200,000 non-traumatic amputations occur. 200,000 uh, in the U.S. non-traumatic amputation. That's a lot of limbs and feet and toes being cut off every year. And this really startled me, this next thing that this cardiologist says. African Americans are four times more likely to experience diabetes-related amputation than whites. I hadn't heard that before. I Just because this guy wrote it, I guess it's maybe not it's not a sure thing, but 
Uh, that startled me to find that our African-American brothers and sisters are suffering four times more likelihood of amputations related to diabetes than whites are. So if you are African-American, uh, you especially have to be careful that you keep your glucose low for the sake of amputations. Of course, there's a lot of other reasons to do that, too. This cardiologist goes on to say in the U.S., every 17 seconds, someone is diagnosed with diabetes. Every day, 230 Americans with diabetes will suffer an amputation. Throughout the world, it is estimated that every 30 seconds, a leg is amputated. This is in the whole world. And 85% of these amputations were the result of a diabetic foot ulcer. So the most common diabetic amputation is going to be a foot ulcer or a foot sore of some kind, nasty, decaying, rotting, gangrenous sore in your foot. Sometimes it may just be in your toe or toes, and it has to be cut off. Well, once again, the name of the game is blood flow. Blood flow is incredibly important. And when you were a small child, your blood flowed freely. And the older you get, the more your blood tends to be a little bit stagnant and not flow so freely. Exercise can help. Movement can help. You know, for most of this world's history, there were no gyms. There was no L.A. fitness. Uh, there were no treadmills. And people got along just fine, and hardly anybody needed amputations from diabetes for most of this world's history because people moved a lot. It's just not natural to sit and sit and sit all day long, sit at a computer or sit uh, on the couch as you watch TV. It's just unnatural. You got to move. You don't have to go to the gym necessarily. That can be helpful, I suppose, but you don't have to. And I don't. I don't have a gym membership. Don't want one. Uh, but you got to move. You got to be active. And if you have to sit, and I do, I mean, I'm guilty. I, I sit at the computer a lot of my day, but I make up for it a little bit by doing exercise on an elliptical trainer. So you got to move. And then, of course, park far away and take a good walk to the store and, and take several trips when you've got to move things around instead of trying to take it all in one trip. Just move, move, move. As the, as the saying goes in that little song, uh, you got to move it, move it. And really, that'll help a lot. But even more important than movement is the low-carb diet so that your blood sugar doesn't gunk up the works because when you have high sugar in your blood, it gets syrupy, it gets thick, and blood just won't flow like it would otherwise. It's not that your blood stops flowing altogether. It'll flow some, but it won't flow like it normally should. And therefore, it doesn't reach some of those tiny capillaries and blood vessels and so forth. It doesn't get into the organs like it should. It doesn't get into the eyes like it should. And you get all kinds of problems as a result of a poor blood flow. And the, one of the big things you can do, really the biggest thing, is to make sure that you keep your glucose levels around normal which means an A1C in the fives, which means a post-meal blood sugar around 125, 130, 135, 140 at the most, and a fasting glucose around 100, less than 100, ideally in the 90s, maybe sometimes in the 80s. Keeping those, those blood sugar levels about the way it would be when you were 25, or most of us were 25 and had good glucose control, if you can keep it that way, then you should be fine. Now, when I was 25, I didn't have to eat the low-carb diet. I didn't do any time-restricted eating. I just did the standard American way. But I was on my way to trouble. But as you get older, you have to take more care and, and do more stuff to keep those glucose levels normal. You have to do things you didn't have to do when you were 24 years old. And you just got to do it. But, of course, amputations is not the only thing a diabetic has to fear. How about kidney failure? How about having to be on dialysis for the rest of your life? How about blindness? Uh, heart, heart attacks uh, are a, 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 a frequent result of having high glucose. And it all works together. It's, it's like at the heart of it is insulin resistance. And then you have these offshoots like diabetes and high blood pressure and heart disease 
and all kinds of problems, they all spring from insulin resistance. If you can get that insulin resistance down, get the glucose down, get the insulin levels down, then all those things normally take care of themselves unless you have some other issue beyond diabetes and beyond insulin resistance. Remember, I have one other YouTube channel. It's called by my name, Dennis Pollock, and it features short little devotional studies related to the Bible. I cover all kinds of topics which will help you understand the Bible and the ways of God. I believe you'll be encouraged, helped, and blessed by watching these devotionals. A link to this channel is in the description.